Okay, so now we're going to look at inhomogeneous systems. Okay, page 12. Okay, so inhomogeneous systems. So we call a system of linear equations inhomogeneous if it has a form ax equals b and b is not equal to zero. Every inhomogeneous system has an associated homogeneous system ax equals zero. Okay, so you can take ax equals b where b is not equal to zero and you can say, oh, there's a, a, so, there's a what would the homogeneous version of that be? You just change the b to a zero, okay? Now here's something important. If x is a solution to an inhomogeneous system and z is a solution to the associated homogeneous system, i.e. z is in the null space of A, okay, so to be in the null space of A, if, you, if z is in the null space of A, that means that A z equals zero, which means that z solves the homogeneous system, A x equals zero, it's a solution for that. So if x is a solution to the inhomogeneous system, i.e. in other words, if A, so x is a solution to the inhomogeneous system, that means A x, oh, sorry, that means that A x equals B, Okay. If the home, if the um, if the um, inhomogeneous system if the home inhomogeneous system is x equals b, so if x is a solution to the inhomogeneous system x equals b, and z is a solution to the associated homogeneous system, i.e., z is in the null space of a, i.e., a z equals zero, then x plus z is another solution to the inhomogeneous system. Okay. Why? So we have an x that satisfies ax equals b. We have a z that satisfies az equals 0. Now we look at what a times x, z, x plus z is. ax plus ax plus z, a of x plus z. Well, a is a linear transformation. It's a matrix. So you can pull out the plus sign. You get ax plus az. ax is equal to b. So you get the b there. az is equal to 0 because... because... Um, Z is the is the homogeneous solution. And B plus zero is just B, of course. So in other words, X plus Z satisfies, solves the system, the homogeneous system AX equals oh sorry, the inhomogeneous system AX equals B, right? Because we have A of that does equal B. Okay. And here's another thing. If X and Y are two so sorry, so what this is saying is that if we have one solution to the inhomogeneous system, and one solution to the homogeneous system, we can generate another solution to the inhomogeneous system. Okay. Now, if x and y are two solutions to the inhomogeneous system, then x minus y satisfies the associated homogeneous system. So x and y are solutions to the inhomogeneous system, so ax equals b and ay equals b. Okay then you look at the difference, x minus y, of course. A of x minus y, well, A is linear, so that becomes AX minus AY, or if you want to put it in two steps, you can do it like this. We're looking at A of x minus y. Okay, that's really the same as A of x plus, and then you have minus 1 times y, right? So it's linear, so you, that becomes ax plus min plus, ooh, sorry, plus a times minus one times y, because it preserves um, addition, and then it also preserves scalar multiplication. So you can bring out the minus one, minus one a times y, but minus one that's just just uh, now you have minus minus one you have minus oh sorry, so you have plus and then minus one a y like that, but, you know, adding a negative, times it, adding, timesing this a by negative, it's the same as, not, as, as subtracting it, right? So you get ax minus ay. ax was, the, was b, ay was also b, so we have b minus b, and that's zero. That's the same, this is this argument, same argument. Just here, we've just gone, skipped some of the pedantic steps of using the linearity. Here I use the linearity in two, in two steps, in the, the addition, Preserving addition and preserving scalar multiplication here, there's use it in one go, and you can you should absolutely get used to doing that. A of x minus y equals ax minus ay. 
which equals b minus b because a equals x and y are solutions to the inhomogeneous system, which equals b minus b is, of course, 0. So a, x, a of x minus y is 0. So x minus y is also is a solution to the homogeneous system. So we've taken two solutions to the inhomogeneous system and used it to generate a solution to the homogeneous system. OK, and then it says, together, these two facts imply that if we have a solution x to an inhomogeneous system of linear equations, we can generate another solution by adding a solution to the associated homogeneous equation, and further, every other solution to the inhomogeneous system can be generated in this way. Oh, that's saying, so that's saying two things, and let's be, try and be clear about how these facts imply that. So the first thing it's saying is, if we have a solution to an inhomogeneous system of linear equations, we can generate another solution by adding a solution to the associated homogeneous equation. Okay, so that's this case. We have a solution to the inhomogeneous system. Well, if we, if we then add z, a solution to the homogeneous system, we get x plus z, which is another solution to the inhomogeneous system. Okay, that's the first thing. Then the next bit says more. Further, every other solution to the inhomogeneous system can be generated in this way. It says that this way of making new solutions to the inhomogeneous system by adding the homogeneous solutions to, in, to this particular, this one solution you found, it's saying that if you do that, you get every possible solution to the inhomogeneous system. Uh, how does it say that? Okay, because it says that that's, it's, it's supposedly due to this, this second fact, right, about the difference. So how, how does that imply that? Because look, suppose you have So you, you take x, right, a solution to the, to the um, inhomogeneous system. You take z, a solution to the homogeneous system, okay? You generate a new solution, use that to generate a new solution, x plus z, okay? That solves the inhomogeneous system. Okay, now the question is, by choosing suitable homogeneous solutions here, can you, in this way, get every possible solution to the inhomogeneous system? Well, I don't know. What about if there was some other solution, y, right? The question now, does y, does y equal the x plus some z, where z is a homogeneous solution, right? So, I mean, it might not necessarily be that, the particular, this particular z, but just some z that's a homogeneous solution. solution. Well, how do you find out? Well, you look at x minus y. So we take x, we say that if x is, x is a particular solution, so x equals b, and y is a particular solution, you subtract them, right? And it says what you get is a solution to the homogeneous system, i.e. what you get is indeed a z that solves the homogeneous system. So you, you do have x minus y equals z, where z solves the homogeneous system. So you can add y to both, you can add, oh, you can rearrange this equation, take y, to the other side, bring z back across, and now you'll have x plus z equals y, right? You have expressed y as this original x plus some homogeneous solution z. So, in other words, this procedure of taking inhomogeneous, taking this one, this one x that solves it, and then taking any old z that solves the homogeneous system, and adding them to get x plus z, that procedure, by choosing the different, by choosing z to be different, you can just from the single x solution get all the possible solutions to the inhomo to the inhomogeneous system, which is very powerful. It means that if we want to solve an inhomogeneous system, we just need to somehow find one solution to the it, to it. And then, as long as we have solutions to the homogeneous system, we can generate all the other solutions to the inhomogeneous system. And that will turn out to be useful because solving an inhomogeneous system is difficult and solving a homogeneous system is usually easy. So we do the easy job of, fi of finding all the solutions to the homogeneous system. Then we do the hard job of just finding one solution to the inhomogeneous system. And then that allows us to, to, do the, to get easily all the solutions to the inhomogeneous system. Okay. 
now we have, well, we have two more facts before we get to subspaces. So this first fact or theorem says that an inhomogeneous system of linear equations ax equals b, so b is not zero, has either no solutions, exactly one solution, or an infinite number of solutions. So that's saying it could be inconsistent, or these two are both consistent, one or more solutions. But if it has, it could have one solution, but if it, it can't just have two solutions. If it has two, if you find two solutions, then you know that actually there must be an infinite number of solutions. Okay, let's see why that is. Well, of course, the inhomogeneous system is either consistent or inconsistent. Of course, it's one of the two. It either has a solution or it doesn't. If it's inconsistent, there's no solution, so that's this case. Okay, now suppose what happens when there is a solution, when it's consistent. So, if, this, if the inhomogeneous system is consistent, consider the homogeneous system, the associated homogeneous system, right? So, we have ax equal b, we assume that there is at least one solution to it, some x that solves that. Now we go change to considering the homogeneous system, ax equals zero. Now, that has either exactly one solution, the zero vector, because the zero vector is always a solution to that, or it has an infinite number of solutions. Why? Because remember, what well, it says fact point one, by fact 1.6, well, fact 1.6, fact 1.6 was that if you have one non-trivial solution to the homogeneous system, then you have an infinite number of non-trivial solutions because you can just multiply your non-trivial solution by alpha, and that generate and alpha could be any real number, so you get infinite number of uh, solutions, right? So this, so this. So this ax equals b has, you know, we're saying that that has one or more solutions, and then this ax equals zero has either one solution or infinitely many solutions. Okay, now if it has exactly one solution, then so does the inhomogeneous system. That is apparently implied by fact 1.8. Let's see, why does that imply that? Fact 1.8 was that if you have two solutions to the inhomogeneous system, then their difference satisfies the homogeneous system. Okay. So if we only have the trivial solution to the homogeneous system, right, then if you have ax equals b and ay equals b, so these are now two solutions to the, supposedly these are two solutions to the inhomogeneous system. Now, fact 1.6, sorry, fact 1.8 said that, well, if you have that, then x minus y is a solution to the homogeneous system, right? It said that a of x minus y equals zero. But now we're saying that the, we're assuming here that the homogeneous system has just one solution. The, that solution must be zero, right? Because zero always solves it. So that means that x minus y as a solution to the homogeneous system must actually equal zero. But if x minus y equals zero, then of course x equals y. So actually we don't have two different solutions to the homogeneous system, we just have one. So we, we have an inhomogeneous system and it's consistent. We look at the associated homogeneous system. It either has just one solution, the zero vector, and if that's the case, then the difference of any two inhomogeneous solutions must be the zero vector. So there's only one inhomogeneous solution. Okay. Another way of thinking about it is that we said that you can, if you have just one solution, x, to the inhomogeneous system, you can generate all the other solutions by adding on inhomogeneous solutions. Now we've just, by adding on homogeneous solutions, sorry, now we've just said, assuming, we're assuming here that there's only one homogeneous solution, the zero, so the only thing you can add on is zero, so the only solution you can get is that, is x. Okay. Now, the other case, what if there are infinitely many homogeneous solutions? So if it, the homogeneous system, has an infinite number of solutions, then so does the inhomogeneous system by fact 1.7. Of course, that's going to say that you add on the homogeneous solutions, right? Yes, fact 1.7. If you add on the homogeneous solutions, the homogeneous solution to the, the inhomogeneous solution, you get new solutions. So if there's an infinite number of homogeneous solutions to add on, you can in this way generate from just your one homogene inhomogeneous solution an infinite number of in new inhomogeneous solutions. And if that's the case, then we have an infinite number of solutions to the inhomogeneous system. Okay, so these three cases are, just to go through them again, we can either have no solutions, right? 
That's when ax equals b is inconsistent, right? We could have ax equals b being consistent, okay? And then that means that we'll have one or more solutions. The question is, do we have one solution, two solutions, three solutions, four solutions, a million solutions, how many solutions? Well, this theorem is saying we have either one or a different number. Why? Because if it's consistent, we have certainly one solution. Let's call it x. So we have one solution. Let's call it x. We look at the, the associated homogeneous system. We see how many solutions does that have. If we have, a, if we have some z that solves that that's not zero, then we can just produce infinitely many more homogeneous solutions by adding on multiples of the z, right? So we have infinite number of solutions. If we do not have such a z, if we do not have such a z, if the z has to be zero, then you're just adding on zeros to x, so you only have one solution, okay? Although any linear combination of solutions to a homogeneous system is again a solution to that system, the same does not hold for inhomogeneous systems. Okay, so this is like a caution. So for homogeneous systems, you can, as we've seen, you can go, you have ax equals zero, you have a y equals zero, then you know that a of x plus y also equals zero because of the linearity of a. But this is not the case for inhomogeneous systems, right? If you have ax equals b, and you have ay equals b, then a of x plus y would be a of x plus a of y, that's true, but that will be b plus b, which is 2 times b, which is not the same as b. I mean, unless b is 0, but we're saying that it's inhomogeneous, so b is not 0. So this is very important. So the matrix A, it's always a linear transformation, right? You always have the case, you always have that ax plus y equals ax plus ay. That's always the case, always linear transformation. But the solutions, the set of solutions, does not always, is not always closed under linear combinations. It's only closed under linear combinations when you're talking about a homogeneous system. For an inhomogeneous system, the set of solutions is not closed under linear, linear combinations. They give a slightly more complicated example here, right? They say, talk about 3x plus 2y, we just talked about x plus y. So you look at a times a of 3x plus 2y, you have a of 3x plus a of 2y, you bring out the 3, you bring out the 2, you bring out the plus, as you know you can, you have 5b, which is not b, right? So that is not, so we have a of that equals 5b, which is not the same as b, so 3x plus 2y is not a solution.